The scripture reading today is Matthew 6, 5 through 8, and it can be found on page 1504 of the Pew Bible. And if it sounds familiar, it's because I read it last week, but I checked and I'm supposed to read it again. So here we go. <laughs> and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is the word of the God, excuse me, this is the word of God for the people of God. Are you getting tired of this passage? This is only week three of a four-week series we've looked at when you pray and where you pray. And today I want to look at who you pray. And this this may seem a little ridiculous or not really significant. However, it's, it's my desire that through these messages you glean something that will aid you in your prayer life. Would you pray with me? Loving Lord, Son of God, Hide me behind you and behind your cross that the words of this mortal's mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. For I ask it in your precious name. Amen. Who we pray. Think about it for a moment. What name do you pray to? What name do you talk to? Moses, in Exodus 3.13, asked for God's name. Simple request. Moses had the audacity to ask who was speaking to him from that burning bush? He needed to truly know who he was talking to. Who it was that was telling him to go back to Egypt to confront Pharaoh and ask for the release of the Israelites. He couldn't just go to Pharaoh and said. My God tells me to tell you, turn my people loose. He needed to know who was giving him this authority. God's response. I am who I am. God is the living, eternal, ever-present, and self-existent, holy, unchanging one. This personal name of God is so holy that many Jews would not speak it out loud or even write it on a piece of paper. It's why when Jesus used the name, the phrase, I am, that He was accused of blasphemy. It's why the psalmist could write in his lament in Psalm 42 verse 2, that he was searching for God, the living God. In a world full of idolatry, the people of the Old Testament worked to make certain no mistake could be made regarding the identity of the one true living God. And it's no different today. 
We make idols out of actresses and actors, out of singers, out of athletes, out of things. We live in a world still full of idol worship and idol hearts. And we need to be aware of the one true living God. What we understand from stories and statistics about unbelievers who pray or request prayer is that a person can value the idea of prayer yet never practice it. I had a conversation not long ago with someone and they said, can you believe that the city council of Lubbock invited an agnostic or maybe it was an atheist to come and offer the prayer before their meeting? I've often wondered, who do they pray to? I know who I pray to. I, I think I know who you pray to. At least I hope I do. And ultimately, we all want our prayers to be useful tools. And as believers, we want to be known that we pray, but we should also let it be known to whom we pray. Using this tool of prayer because we can introduce the world to the God that we pray to. Who is this God? People might ask us that very question. Who is this God to us when it comes to prayer? And I want you to understand before you leave today. And I want to focus primarily on verse 6b. But when you pray, go into your private room. Shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now that, that right there is another way of saying will answer you. The person who we pray is our Heavenly Father. And there's three important things to remember about our Heavenly Father. The first is, He is the Sovereign who is. We're told in our Scripture passage that He is in that secret place. That He hears. That He knows. The Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Hebrews, these words. And without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. So if we're going to pray to, to Him, to our God, our Heavenly Father, we must believe that He exists that He hears and He will answer. The Apostle John tells us this. And this is the boldness we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. 1 John 5.14 Again, we pray to God trusting that He will hear us and that He knows us. The psalmist also proclaims to use this, to us this. Come and hear. 
all who fear God, and I will tell what He has done for me. I cried aloud to Him, and He was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Psalm 66, 16-19 We celebrate being children of the sovereign God of all. Of all creation who hears us, who knows us and claims us as His children. Secondly, He is the God who responds. God loves His children and He has claimed us as His children. Just like a loving parent, God responds to His children's prayers, pleas, and inquiries. Jeremiah tells us this in his words found in Jeremiah 33, verses 2 and 3. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, The Lord is His name. Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Likewise, Jesus tells us in our passage today this very same thing. We can celebrate as children of God knowing that we have a sovereign God of all of all creation that knows us, hears us, and responds to our prayers. Third and lastly, He is the God who blesses. We have a God who loves to give us good gifts. Jesus describes this aspect of our God, His Heavenly Father, later in this same Sermon, Sermon on the Mount, from Matthew. And here's what Jesus tells us. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, would give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Knowing all of this, what do you think of when you pray to God? Or what do you think of when you pray, period? I encourage you to not falsely assume in prayer that your Father in Heaven has any of the weaknesses of your earthly father. And we should celebrate every day, not just every Sunday, the fact that God answers prayers. January 8, 2007, 6.30, 6.45 in the morning I'm in the cath lab at United Regional in Wichita Falls. Dr. Thoda is the cardiologist. He's ready to do the cath procedure. He's standing in front of that monitor ready to, to begin. And First off, he's kind of surprised in seeing me because he's seen me numerous times over four years when I've been there in the waiting room with families 
of a loved one that's either going through a cath procedure or some other procedure in the cath lab. And he said, I never thought I would see you in here. He said, but we're here. I'm ready if you are. And I said, no, I'm not. And those eyes cut from that monitor straight into my eyes. What's wrong, Tom? I said, Doc, we need to pray first. Oh, please do, Tom. I'm, I'm just a mere mortal and I need God all the time. I need His expertise in guiding my hands and my guiding my eyesight and recall. Please do. So I prayed. And we did the cath procedure. And when he was finished, he said, Tom, I'm sorry God didn't answer your prayer the way you prayed. And I said, God, that's okay. Doc, that's okay. God answered the prayer giving you the wisdom on the next step. Because you told me you would call Dr. Dean to come visit and to take me through the next step. Dr. Dean was the thoracic surgeon. The calf showed four blockages. 95, 88, 85, 80. Dr. Thoda went out to see Rhonda and those members from the Vernon Church that were there supporting her and praying for me and began drawing on the dry erase board and Rhonda's has told me, and she'll tell you the same thing, she fell back against the wall and began sliding down and said, Doc, just tell me he's dead. He said, no, Rhonda, he's not. God has purpose and God's not through with him yet. Yes, maybe he should be, but he's not. And we can celebrate that. We saw Dr. Dean that night and Friday was surgery. Monday to Friday. When he came out after surgery to talk to Rhonda, he drew the four, but he drew a fifth one. Fifty-five percent. And he basically on Monday evening confirmed the same thing Dr. Thoda did is by all rights you should be dead but God's not through with you yet. He's got work for you to do. That entire week I was at such peace. Never worried. Rhonda will tell you that. You see, God does answer prayers. It may not be what we ask because God has something better in mind. But God answers. We all have something in our life that God answers. That's how God answered my prayer. And yes, we all have something in our life that God has heard in our prayers concerning and God has answered that prayer. Maybe not specifically 
in the manner we hope. Rather in what's best for us and what's best for those involved. You see, we we sometimes forget about those involved. We get self-centered, self-focused. And don't think about the others involved. Think about the others involved. Thank you, God, for being a God who loves His children, who hears their prayers and answers those prayers with what conforms to Your will and to what is best for all involved. May we praise each and every day You, Lord God, for being our God. As the psalmist tells us in Psalm 150, verse 6, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen and Amen.